guys, Willie here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Buick Encore GX Sport Touring. And a big thanks to Gordon and the rest of the management and staff here at Eagle Buick and GMC in Homosassa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV or truck in the Homosassa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Gordon. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Encore GX has been one of Buick's subcompact crossover SUVs since 2020. Sharing a platform with the Chevy Trailblazer and facelifted this year for 2024, featuring new front and rear bumpers, lights, and grille. We also get several new wheel options and Buick's all new Tri-Shield logo. Inside, the 2024 Encore GX gets an all new 19 inch digital dash with an 11 inch touchscreen and eight inch digital gauge display with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The top essence trim for 2023 is replaced with a new Avenir and the previous mid-range select trim is replaced with the Sport Touring that you see here. With a base price of 27,000 bucks, what else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your flickering LED daytime running lights not actually flicker in real life. Just how the camera picks up the LEDs and Buick's all new Tri-Shield logo. Because of this logo and bold front styling, I really thought this SUV was something that was sold by like Maserati. We have the LED front headlamps too, a little bit of chrome surrounding the black bumper with the ST badge in the corner. I kind of wish we had a black bumper for the ST, but it still looks bold, especially with the black front lip, black side skirts that we'll check out in one second, and black headlight housing. We'll take a step to the side, take a quick look at this wheel design for the ST or the Sport Touring. We get a more aggressive wheel design with these black rims. They're 18 inch rims wrapped in Hankook Kinergy GT all season tires, dimensions being 225-55R18. So they're bold with 18 inch rims that kind of have a Camaro design to them. If you guys have seen my Camaro LT1, these look very similar. The Camaros are 20 inch rims. These are 18s, but they still look super bold and aggressive for this Encore GX. And the 55 series sidewall should keep the ride quality really plush and the 225 wide tires should be perfectly wide enough for this 1.3 liter turbo. The black front lip extends for the wheel arch area and the rocker panel side skirt area. And this gray metallic paint looks absolutely beautiful in this Florida sun. I'll show you guys in a window sticker the exact name of this gray metallic paint. A Little bit of shiny chrome for the top part of the window trim blacked out down below, blacked out B pillar and the shiny chrome extends for the top part of the C pillar with a little bit of gloss black right underneath it. I kind of wish the whole trim for the top was blacked out. We get aluminum roof rails up top, no sunroof, no moonroof and no shark fin style antenna, but it doesn't protrude too badly. We get four door smart access. That's a nice feature. The mirrors are body color with black contrast underneath. Blind spot monitoring on the glass, the window sticker, we can take a look for this 2024 Encore GX Sport Touring. So this paint color is called Moonstone Gray Metallic. The interior, we get ebony with ebony accents, the 1.3 liter turbo engine, which is standard for the Sport Touring. The base, you have an option between a 1.2 liter turbo, which cranks out, I believe, 137 horsepower, but this 1.3 makes about 155. Standard features, you guys can pause, take a look for 26,800 bucks. The options include the comfort package for 1,295. Here we get basically the same features out of the top Avenir trim. We get a power, driver's seat, remote vehicle start, two-way lumbar control, heated steering wheel, driver and front passenger heated seats. You can see everything else that's available. This Moonstone Gray Metallic is about a $500 option, 400 for a power lift gate, and 40 bucks for the front license plate bracket. After a $1,295 destination charge, we're sitting a tick over 30,000 bucks. Fuel economy, 30 MPGs, 29 in the city, 31 on the highway. I'm sorry if it's not centered. I'll try to focus that for you guys if I can. Anyway though, we get four door smart access. If I didn't mention, the gas cap is pushed open with easy fill. I'm pretty sure you could throw 87 octane fuel, but as with most turbocharged engines, I'd still probably recommend going with premium. We had full LED taillights and I really like the design. They kind of remind me of something that you get from BMW. The reverse lights also appear to be LED with some reflectors right outside of them. Buick badge with the new Tri-Shield logo, ST in the corner. It is a really bold styled SUV. Definitely one of the best lookers in the segment. Hopefully you can get a good look at the exhaust tip down below. And speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 1.3 liter turbo and hear how she sounds.
All right, guys, that was the sound of the 1.3 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine sold by Buick for the 2024 Encore GX. It doesn't sound very aggressive, especially with a 2500 RPM rev limiter, but it makes an okay amount of power at 155 horsepower, 174 pound feet of torque. You can expect zero to 60 in the mid eight second range. You can also option for the 1.2 liter turbo for the base model, which cranks out a little bit less power at 137 horsepower, 162 pound feet of torque and you can do zero to 60 in about nine, 9.1. But anyway, averaging about 30 MPGs, what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this hood right down, no hydraulic struts, but it's not the heaviest hood with this subcompact SUV. Taking a step inside, we'll see what we get available for a sub $30,000 mid-trim Encore GX. I'm already impressed with the four-door smart access. Taking a step inside, we'll set the headlights back to auto so the car is not screaming at me. It looks like it's gonna be screaming at me either way. All right, there we go. So up top, we get soft touch materials. That's impressive for a sub $30,000 subcompact SUV. We get very soft leather wrapped armrest, auto one touch for the driver, power windows for the rest of the passengers, four way adjustable mirrors. You can adjust the height of this power lift gate and very solid amount of storage. You'll be able to stack probably three or four foot longs on top of each other. And the sound system here, it's just a bass sound system, no bows or anything like that, but GM does a wonderful job with their bass audio systems. The seats, they say ST as part of the headrest. They're perforated leather. They're heated, not ventilated. Wouldn't be expected at this price point. Fully adjustable though. That's part of the convenience package. You have lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide. The seat's taking a step inside. We can really check it out. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is this is a really premium looking interior for the price point. The steering wheel has very high quality leather stitching, contrast stitching. The horn area is rubberized, the horn itself, loud and aggressive. People will definitely be getting out of your way. Red, white, and blue, new Tri-Shield Buick badge on the horn. Flat bottom steering wheel, very sporty for this ST trim or sport touring trim. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have our cruise control settings, forward collision alert, and the heated steering wheel. On the right side, voice commands, hang up and answer your phone calls, and the adjustments for the infotainment. Speaking of the adjustments, you can adjust between gauge one, clean, infotainment, vehicle info. So gauge two, let's see what it looks like. It's a little bit different. You press and hold, let go, and it shows you another screen with vehicle information. We'll click on that, and that's what we get. Interesting, it takes a long time. You gotta press and hold for a second just to, for it to show up. Infotainment, you see the music that's currently playing, press and hold, let go, and clean. We'll see what clean looks like. Pretty clean, cool. My personal favorite though would be gauge one, so we'll leave it there. And in gauge one, you see the fuel level in the top left, coolant temperature beneath that, and a digital speedo with a faux tack running through the center when you rev it up. Let's see if it actually works. Nope, you gotta actually be driving to see it. The turn signal stocks have a pretty satisfying click. We don't get paddle shifters, but we do get media adjustments on both sides of the steering wheel. No rain sensing wipers either. We do get auto headlamps and auto high beams, but the intermittent stock for the wipers right there in the center. Outside of the headlight controls, we also have our interior brightness, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Hopefully you get a good look at your pedals with the hood latch release. Right next to the eight inch digital gauge display is this 11 inch touchscreen, and it looks really premium. It reminds me a lot of the updated Chevy Trax 2. Here we can see the song's currently playing, phone information, we don't have one connected, we're not going to either. You see the maintenance with your trip gauges, fuel economy, trip information, awesome. You also have the home screen. In the home screen, you have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, overall settings, and Wi-Fi hotspot. We can take a quick look at the backup camera. The gear selector controls a CVT transmission. We have a really crisp, high-resolution backup camera with guidance lines and trajectory, and if you don't want to see them, you can turn off the guidance lines and trajectory for one reason or another. The gear selector has a low gear, no sport mode, at least not on the gear selector. Beneath that we have air vents, hazards in the center, stitching for the center of the dashboard, some faux carbon aluminum trim behind this digital gauge display and running all throughout this dash, and some stitching for the dashboard itself. Very premium, soft touch feel. We have manual climate control. That's not a knock for me. I actually prefer manual climate control over automatic heated seats on both sides, USB-A and C port, and 12 volt. Beneath that, no wireless charging pad. You gotta go to the Avenir to get that as a standard feature. Here, we can turn off the engine auto start stop, lane keep assist, and traction control. You can turn off for one reason or another too. A Little bit of shiny aluminum trim. The cup holders will fit up to 24 ounce bottles and the pass-through, good spot for a phone or a wallet. 
Speaking of good spot for a phone or a wallet, you can throw it right here in the center stack. And also this can function as a massive size cup holder because look, my bottle's not fitting in there, but it can quite easily fit in there. So if you're looking for a vehicle that can hold a larger water bottle, this one is definitely for you. The armrest is pretty soft. It's not as hard as my Camaro, but it's not as soft as most luxury SUVs. The console space is just about non-existent, but you can remove this tier. And here, you can probably fit two two-liter bottles of soda in there. Very deep console, but as a result of the deep console, this armrest sits a little bit high up, at least for my liking. Continuing along beneath this stitched dashboard area, we have our glove box. It is damp, not lined with felt. A pretty large, you'll fit 25 license plates in there, possibly squeeze two pairs of shoes if you're under a size 10. We don't get a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, but it has that flappy thing to dim it. Pretty premium feeling headliner. It's very softly padded, no moonroof. That just allows us to have a little bit more headroom, especially out rear. The interior lights appear to be LED. You have your OnStar SOS right up top, and that's about it for the front seat of this 2024 Buick Encore GX sport touring let's hop out back see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the material so hard plastic up top to be expected but we still get that leather stitching for the armrest a little bit of storage auto one touch for the way back down but not auto or auto one touch for the way down not auto one touch for the way back up i like the white contrast stitching decent amount of storage you'll probably be able to slide two foot longs but they're going to be a little bit vertical so make sure there's no ranch or sauce that's going to make a mess all over your cup holders. The rear seats, the padding goes all the way out to the door frame. We'll unbuckle these seat belts. There's a little bit of bolstering too for a back seat. What appears to be pretty solid legroom too for a subcompact. We'll take a step inside, see how much space is offered back here. I'm a little bit over six foot tall and I still have about an inch, maybe an inch and a half of knee room, headroom, about an inch. So if you're under six two, six three. You'll sit behind your own seat settings here with no problem. If you're over 6263, just sit behind the passenger and have them compromise a little bit of space. You get a map pocket behind the driver and the passenger, but the rear pass the rear of the passenger seat looks a little bit different compared to the rear of the driver's seat. No air vents that blow directly into your face. There's something going on underneath the seat, but nothing that blows into your face. We have a USB-A and C port down below and what would be a AC outlet for the top avenue trim. The center armrest cubby we can take it out you can fit two 24 ounce bottles no problem pass through perfect for a phone and it's a nice padded armrest as well the interior lights back here are also what appear to be led we get a hook for this grab handle on the driver's side nothing on the passenger side we also get two speakers on both sides that probably is a microphone for the voice recognition system and if that's the case that's smart by gm that not only the driver has a microphone the passenger does too because i remember in the older cars i'll be having a conversation from a passenger seat and nobody would hear me from that call anyway continue along i'm locked back here for the trial locks maybe we can unlock back here nope this is like the third vehicle in a row that i've been locked back there because of child locks but we'll take a step out from the passenger side check out the cargo space real quick and then take this 2024 buick encore gx out for a drive we get the power lift gate it's a 400 dollars option and a pretty large cargo space for a subcompact secret storage we'll see if we get any there's a little bit surrounding your spare tire and i like these cutouts you can throw some car accessories in there and with the wheel wall cutouts you can maybe fit a golf bag horizontally you'll definitely fit it diagonally you can fold those rear seats down you'll fit a 55 inch tv back here maybe a 60 pretty spacious cargo space for a subcompact and the button to close the lift gate right down below so make sure you get out of the way because it does not give you a second if you're holding grocery bags get out of the way or you're gonna get doofed in the head that's about it though guys for the inside and outside of this beautiful redesigned all new 2024 Buick Encore GX. Performance wise, we get the more powerful 1.3 liter turbocharged three cylinder here for the sport touring trim. And speaking of that, let's take this 2024 Buick Encore ST out for a drive and see what it's got. All right guys, now just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Buick Encore GX ST. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions of the steering, it's like sharp and direct, but it takes a lot of actual steering input to get the vehicle to change directions. Other than that though, the steering itself feels good. The throttle, very punchy and responsive off the line. We'll take a step out into this multiple lane highway at some point and see if it continues to pull in the mid range and up top, but that immediate punch, very strong. I was not expecting that with a turbocharged 
three cylinder engine. But let's see if I continue to be happily surprised once we take a step out over here. All right, guys, taking a step out here, we'll lean into it about halfway. Ooh, good mid range. Wow. Yeah, the mid range feels very strong here. That was a little bit less than half throttle. So compared to vehicles like a Honda CRV, this definitely has a more punchy mid range. We'll see how it is up top because the Honda CRV's um, turbocharged four cylinder, it really kicks in after about 4,500 RPM like a traditional VTEC engine. But just cruising along at highway speeds, very quiet in here. We'll do a window check, see if we get dual panes. We don't, but it feels like a very thick single pane of glass. Definitely thicker than what you get from a Chevy Trailblazer. The steering wheel feels extremely premium giving this vehicle a more premium overall feel and the sound system here although it's a bass not a bose like you would get from the avenir it still sounds really good all right guys taking a step out here we'll check out the turning radius very sharp and on the gas Ooh. yeah it doesn't really pull like crazy up top but it still gets up and goes steering feels good there's a little bit of body roll but Nothing that you wouldn't expect from the segment. The steering still feels nice, sharp, and direct. It is playful. Although there's a little bit of body roll, it still doesn't feel anywhere close to out of control. Handles the bumps fantastically, thanks to these 55 sidewall tires. And even at some higher speeds, it is still super quiet. The brakes feel good, really good. As soon as you try to lean into that brake pedal, you're slowing down significantly. We'll try to slow down a little bit more. Maybe we'll do a little highway pull, see how it is from a moving acceleration, I guess. A little bit of delay, but whoo, good surge of power. And you can feel the artificial shifts from the CVT. Over the bigger bumps, yeah, the ride quality stays extremely smooth. If you guys have been wondering what that rattle was, this visor wasn't properly tucked in. Now that should eliminate just about all rattles. Keeping up with highway traffic takes just about zero throttle very smooth with a CVT made it to this three cylinder turbo engine. I'm usually not a big fan of CVTs, but with this turbocharged three cylinder, it always kind of keeps it in the meat of that power band. And now at even higher speeds, it still stays unbelievably quiet. You guys see that thing? It's got the ATV in the middle of the highway. Interesting. Right here should be a good opportunity. We'll try out a little high speed U-turn, see how the body roll really is right here. Wow, it's actually surprisingly limited on the gas. Woo! <laughs> a little bit of torque steer there. Woo! Very solid acceleration here. One more time, guys. We'll try some passing power. Woo! Not bad. Overall, guys, if you're looking for an SUV, you don't need it to be a large SUV. You just want to be able to seat four or five full-size adults comfortably and be a little bit higher up off the ground compared to a sedan, then I would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 Buick Encore GX. It looks awesome. This might be one of the best lookers in the segment, in my opinion. The interior looks top-notch premium for a sub $30,000 base price. The touchscreens are awesome. The steering wheel feels also top-notch premium. The driving dynamics feel like a luxury SUV. It picks up quick. The steering feels refined, smooth, and luxurious. So does the ride very quiet even at higher speeds it's a legitimate premium suv and with a base price under thirty thousand bucks i would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 buick encore and check out the sport touring it's the best looks and you have a standard more powerful 1.3 liter turbocharged engine and a big thanks to eagle buick and gmc and homo zassa florida for helping make this review possible i'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car suv or truck in the Homo Zassa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if any specific cars SUVs or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. Other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.